Uh, we are currently being joined by the head media and publicity and also spokesperson of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, uh, Mr. Dele Oyewole, uh, who is a former assistant and editor of Tell Magazine and multiple award winner. He's trained at the London School of Management and the University of Cambridge on public relations and issues of economic crimes. He was the former head of media units, both at the Lagos and Portaco directorates of EFCC. Uh, Mr. Dele is also married with children. You're very much welcome to the program, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the program. It's indeed a pleasure to have you grace our studios. Thank uh, you so much. Very quickly now, let's uh, talk about the matter most hottest on the table yeah where 19 states have uh, filed a lawsuit against uh, the economic and financial crimes commission challenging its legality alongside the icpc now news this morning says that uh, about three states have withdrawn from the suit <laughs> how, how, how do you react to this as um you know being the media head of the efcc uh, well you know uh, elementary in law, when a matter is before the court, uh, it is subjudice to to make any comment on the on the on the issue. Yes. But uh, be that as it may, the imperative of fighting corruption uh, is something that we cannot wish away. Uh, those that are talking, they are talking about constitutionality. They are talking about technicality. They are talking about issues of uh, pyrotechnics of the law and all of that those issues uh, whether they are they have merit or not they cannot overshadow overemphasize the need for us to join us together to tackle the problem of corruption Certainly. the truth of the matter is that corruption is an issue in nigeria and uh, whichever angle we look at it all of us individually and corporately we need to tackle the problem uh, so those that have gone to court, the Supreme Court is there to adjudicate on all of the issues they are talking about. But we know that the commanding height of our economy, our domestic economies, individual economies, corporate economies, they are all suffering because of the issue of corruption. Yes. So we need to frantically and frontally confront the issue of corruption. And there is no need for all. There is no. You see, if you pick up your mirror one day, uh, and it tells you that your face needs washing, there is no use breaking the mirror. Go for soap and water and wash your face. And wash your face. So the truth of the matter is that uh, escapism can never be a solution to any problem. If there are problems, let's tackle the problem. There is no dancing around it. There is no beating about the bush. So uh, what the commission has been doing is that we have identified a problem and we are tackling it you know a problem well stated is a, is a problem i've solved now, now mr daly you you tend to speak in parables a little bit and uh, i know we do not want to beat around the bush but yes the case is still in court do you think that perhaps there is some sort of personal vendetta against the efcc by some of the state governors that mandated the push for that suit there will always be vendetta now there will always we are in we are in a worse situation uh, fighting corruption is not is not a tea party yes uh, it's not a it's not a jollof rice issue it's a very serious issue a very serious and so corruption is always fighting back and uh, so whether vendetta whether resentment whether hostility the truth of the matter is that whoever has an issue against the efcc uh, we we always look at ways and means into faint is our anger. Yes. And so there could be friend it just like you have rightly said it. But whether it is friend it cannot be an issue before the court. There are facts. So uh, uh, cases are are won or lost on the basis of substance, on the basis of evidence, on the basis of facts. And so let the Supreme Court determine, determine and let us all see uh, what becomes of the matter. Now let's uh, get back to the issue of transparency in the system. Uh, ICPC, just as much as EFCC, are both uh, uh, organizations saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that um, financial crimes are curbed and stopped and offenders are prosecuted in the country. Yeah. Now, over the years, a lot of people have shared the opinion that perhaps, just maybe, there might be some elements within uh, the EFCC that have compromised the standard that it was initially 
set with and has been known for for many years Take, take, take for instance the case of the white lion who visited your office here in Abuja while you were looking for him and he was not apprehended. A lot of Nigerians are wondering why that scenario happened till today. Very good. You see, let me take the, the, all these issues one by one. Number one, there is no compromise anywhere. Uh, only fools doubt proofs. Okay. In the last one year, the commission has secured 3,455 convictions, meaning that 3,455 financial offenders have been jailed in one year. So if there are compromises, where are those compromises? And all of these conflicts, they cut across different sectors of the economy. The high class, the middle class, the low class, or whatever class we may want to, we may want to pigeon all them. So, if in one year a commission, through the instrumentality of its operation yes. and if mm -hmm. by the vibrancy of leadership, because leadership is key, the the uh, executive chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Olaoluko, is a no nonsense person. He's a Nigerian that is passionate about the fight against corruption, and is driving the is driving the fight. So, if in in one year, you know, he was able to secure three thousand. 455 conviction. Then what co what compromise are we talking about? Uh, you know, and concerning the issue of a Yaya Bilo, yes, we declare him wanted. That's a global best practice. A very hot topic in the country. At a the very time. hot topic. I agree with you. Yes, we declare him wanted, and on the basis of his uh, of uh, being declared wanted, they are all laid bare before the public. Mm -hmm. All the issues that are involved, yes, they are laid bare before the public. I would say, well, come. Come and uh, 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 we have this issue against you. Come, let's go to court. He has neither uh, respected our summon or our invitation. Uh, do you know that several day courts have summoned him more than seven times? Well, I'm very aware of. I'm, you I'm aware that courts now, have summoned him. Uh, uh, so the exact number this, is this matter is not just about the EFCC. Okay. Uh, uh, no, no, it's not about the EFCC alone. Yes, he came. There was a time he came into our premises. He said he came to, uh, he came for reasons best known to himself. And you see, let me, let me. But let when me, he came at a time when the manhunt was on for him. Yeah. Let me let me quickly okay. explain this. You see, in law enforcement, yes, there are issues that may make ordinary sense. There are issues that may make what we call common sense, native intelligence, yes. native sense but it may not make intelligence sense. EFCC is an intelligence-driven agency. agency. There are procedures and processes. There are rules of engagement. There's what you call the standard operating uh, procedure. So a suspect coming to submit himself or herself, there are procedures. It just don't come and say, uh, I'm coming, you, know, you have done the propaganda, even when you have not gone to our premises, you have told everybody that I'm, they, I'm in their custody, uh, you, you know, you have created a lot of uh, hysteria in the public and all of that, and you want the commission to play into that, no. Well, in so, a, it, see, yes. Liz, yes. we have reasons why it was not taken into custody. You understand? And do do you care to share those reasons? Uh, no, no, no. You see, and uh, there are, are issues that are bordered on our on our operations. Uh, it, 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 see, it, it's, it's just a normal, it's a commonsensical thing. Somebody you have declared wanted is in your premises. Uh, you, you, you quickly take him in. But it would have been a problem. But we didn't do that because of the intelligence that we have. Okay. And because of the fact that the sacredness and the, uh, and the sacrosanctity of our operations, there are rules. Now we are not he, going he, to he compromise. Came, he came alongside the Kogi, the Kogi State Governor. He, with uh, a sitting uh, governor. Uh, yes. Uh, we are, he came with a sitting governor. He came with a retinue of uh, ace and all of that. And um, we have reasons why we didn't take him into custody. But we, we, which you would not divulge. No, no, no. So at the appropriate time, justice will be served. You see, you know, in, in criminal trial, uh, time is important, but it's not, so, it's not too important because in two years time, in three years time, there is no time lag. You can, and a, a, a suspect in a criminal matter, in 20 years, in 30 years, can be made to answer to any child that is preferred against him. 
So Nigeria needs to understand that they have an agency that is globally competitive, that is the EFCC, yes. and that is governed by rules, not by sentiment, not by emotions, not by street logic, you understand, by intelligence. I think we should be proud of the commission because if you look at it simplistically, you say, ah, so this is what we expected. Then it means that there are more than more to read than meets the ordinary eye. Well, let's let's uh, move away from that and uh, talk a little bit about the issue of cyber crimes, what we know as Yahoo yeah. or 419 yeah. in the country, which is rampant. It's almost like a boastful thing, especially amongst the younger demogra demogra uh, demographic of people in the country who boast of being able to, you know, perform such uh, crimes or criminality online. And uh, um, Nigerians have sort of are beginning to feel like perhaps the EFCC isn't really going after the actual people that they are supposed to be looking out for, people who siphon government funds and the rest, and are now focusing more on these young boys who are into the cyber crimes. It's always EFCC has arrested 15 uh, 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 Yahoo boys, or EFCC has arrested five, or has raided this, has raided that. Is that the, the focus of the agency or the commission at the moment? No. I think as you make uh, some clarifications in this regard, yes. I just told you now that in the last one year, uh, we were able to secure 3,455 convictions. Yes. I must also let you know that within that time frame, four former governors have been arraigned before the court. Four former ministers have been arraigned before the court. Key government agencies, they have been investigated. All this one, don't they qualify as high profile cases? Well, that's quite a minute number. No, 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 no. Do you know, do you know, do you know what it takes to even investigate a former governor? You concluded investigation, drafted charges, and you charge the fellow to court. Four of them in one year. Four former ministers in one year. So, it is not true, it is not correct that the EFCC is unduly focused on uh, cyber criminals. No. Our operations are broad-based. Our operations, they are fully integrated. Our operations cut across different classes of, uh, of uh, financial offenders. And even concerning the, the, the internet fraudster that we are talking about, it is because we don't know we, the, the enormity of uh, damage this set of uh, criminals are doing to us as a nation, we seem not to, to realize that it is a major, major, major problem that we have on our hands. My chairman just said yesterday that by 2025, that is next, next year, the whole world will be losing $10.5 trillion to, to cybercrime. And another report also stated that in, in, in 2022 alone, Nigeria no, 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 no. lost last 500... Year, last year. Last year, 2023. Okay, 2023 lost 500, 500 million, million US dollars. Yeah. So when you look at this kind of uh, damages, this kind of uh, losses that we are incurring as a nation, as a sort of the activities of internet fraudsters, then uh, the, uh, I think it would not be right to say that uh, the commission is, uh, is going after them. If you are not going after them, Hmm? Trouble may go after all of us. There is a lot of reputational damage that this country is suffering as a result of cyber criminals. I don't know whether you, you are aware that today across the world, cyber crime is regarded as the Nigerian scam. It is well known. Is it a good name? Certainly not. Should we fold our hands? So that we not say so that critics will not say that oh the EFCC is always running after internet frost ties. We are doing a lot of service to the nation to redeem our image globally and to relaunch the nation you know in, in, respectively in the in the committee of nations you know just last year i mean just last month just last month this uh, october i had cause to to go to the to the uk you know for a program and uh, i think it was at a, at a gatwick airport there in london when the immigration officer they started harassing, uh, asking me questions, delaying me on delay and all of that, and they started asking questions. We, my papers, everything, entered no wala. Yes, I was even I was going to, to Cambridge University. You know, so I said, what what problem do you have? 
It was when I started talking. What was what's, what's, what's going on? For God's sake, I am a Nigerian. Just because you are Nigerian. Just and the I'm stigma Nigerian. of being Nigerian I am is already you. out there. So doing. many Nigerians have suffered. Some people are suffering the same kind of embarrassment across the world as we are talking. They look at you as, as a potential criminal. Even with all your valid papers, with all your immigration documents, everything complete, they still embarrass you. Should we allow that to continue? Should we mortgage the future of our children just because we don't want critics to say that uh, this is what we are doing, this is what we are doing? That's why we are focused. Because we know the problem, we know the challenges, and we know what the nation is suffering, and we don't want this to continue. My chairman said it. It was it was it was in uh, one of these uh, eastern countries yes. some few months back, you know, for a very very important, uh, meeting. important meeting, the financial uh, action ta task force. Now there were these uh, American. They were in in the in the hotel. They wanted to pay, you know, for their hotel accommodation. There were these fellow that paid before him. He was an American. They took his ATM. He paid, and they returned his card to him. But when it was the turn of my chairman. He had paid. His cars are valid. Everything valid. Bring my ATM. They didn't return it. What's the problem? They took the ATM to one room. They did some photocopy. They said, ah. Then he said, ah, what is the meaning of this? He said, eh, we have instruction that uh, any card that bears uh, the Nigerian identity, uh, we need to scan it very well. Uh, we need to do that. He felt embarrassed. That's quite a very As big, the number big, one anti-crime fighter yes. in Nigeria. Should we allow such situation to continue? Certainly not. So that is the more reason why the commission is making every effort to ensure that the narrative uh, 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 changes. We are not just only involved in arresting, in uh, charging them to call the commission. Now we are profiling alternatives. Yesterday we had a national dialogue, a national summit on cybercrime. Alternative to cybercrime. How do we optimize keys? Now, now, now in, in the national dialogue, the summit that you just mentioned, I yeah. believe your chairman made a comment that sort of caught my attention where he mentioned a 14 year old boy who he took to his office to, and to his know, office. He asked him to open his laptop I'm without a password. He opened it. He up. opened it. He said, Eh, how are you able to do this? You know, he said that uh, uh, I'm, uh, but, there are our youths. Are intelligent. Yes. Our youth are resourceful. But with, our, with, with oh, such intelligence, Mr. Dilly, how do we ensure that they are not just only arrested and prosecuted and sent to prison to go and wallow there for a couple of years, but there should be some sort of mind change, some sort of rehabilitation. That is what we the, are the, saying. The, the way the government has always done for probably militants or the Boko Haram insurgents and the rest. That is what we are today. Under the leadership of uh, Mr. Ola Ulukoyede, there is the Cyber Crime Research Center that is already uh, that is already in, in place in the EFCC. What is the research, research center meant for? For rehabilitation, for refocusing, you know, for total total overall of issues that have to do with cyber crime to train and retrain. Yes. All of this, uh, you see somebody that has very wonderful skill. You take him there. You you. You optimize the skill for national development. We are trying to reconstruct the thinking of our youth. We are trying to re-engage them. We are trying to redirect them to a more socially beneficial route. So that together as a nation, we'll be able to derive value from our youth. If we say we'll be chasing them, chasing them, chasing them every day, putting them in prison, convicting them, it's not in the overall interest of the nation. Let's provide alternatives. I think the, the whole nation... I mean, with, without sending emodes, you have an agency that is doing that. I think we, sh we, sh we should give a, commens a commensurate level of appreciation to an agency that will even think outside the box and say, no, we are not just going to be arresting these people. We are going to provide alternatives. We are going to tell them that you can, you can go into this route. You can, you can consider this. You can you direct your skill toward this. You can do this thing in a better way. That is if they are willing to accept that. No, they will be willing because... When you when you rightfully and it's a it's a mind matter. Yes, you understand. Mm -hmm. They are not congenitally uh, attuned to criminality. As my chairman will always say, Nigerians are not fundamentally bad people. We are good people. It is the system that we run that is the problem, and we are making effort for systemic change, for transformation. 
in a way that we will all be able to derive optimal value from all that God has given us, our intelligence, our skill. So that is an alternative way of fighting cybercrime, not just uh, holding people into detention and all of that. Let us see what we can make out of all these skills, the intelligence that our youth that, that, that they have. Let, let's talk about international crime now, mostly committed by Nigerians out of the country or outside the country, or perhaps foreigners who come to Nigeria, commit financial crimes and flee the country. Uh, do you have modalities in place for such criminal elements to be apprehended, perhaps repatriated to Nigeria and prosecuted here? Of course now. You know, uh, in, uh, 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 financial crimes and economic crimes, they have become transnational crimes. Yes. And um, international agencies are collaborating to ensure that there is no safe haven for any criminal. Uh, you have the Interpol there now, the international police. You understand? Anywhere in the world. The dragnets are there. There is no safe haven for criminal in any in anywhere in the world because except we don't commit the crime. A you criminal that commits the crime, he will do the time. Because across the world there is no hiding place. There so there's there is a synergy between oh, there is your synergy. your agency and Interpol and Very some other international organizations. Robust as well. robust synergy. Is it the Federal Bureau of Investigation you want to talk about? Is it the Australian police? Is it the Metropol the Metropolitan Police in, in UK? Or any law enforcement agency across the world? Our synergy is solid, it's effective, it's functional, and it's robust. And it is to ensure that there is no hiding place for any criminal anywhere in the world. Well, well, well you have uh, rightly put it, as uh, Mr. Dele Oyewale has as uh, rightly mentioned, there is no hiding place for any criminal out there in the world, be you Nigerian or a foreigner, as long as you have committed a financial crime within the country that concerns Nigeria, you will be fished out and whoever does the crime must do the time. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, transparency now. There are instances where your agency goes after criminals or people who have siphoned government funds and the rest. Uh, um, repatriations of funds are made recoveries are made and all of that i know it's perhaps a a rather sensitive topic but most people tend to wonder when these funds are recovered okay what is the channel of maybe reintegrating the funds back into the nigerian government's coffers or what does the efcc do with these funds very good thank you for that question uh you know the mandate of the efcc allows us to make recoveries of a uh, ill-gotten asset, you know, and we are doing that. Uh, in the last one year, I think we have uh, recovered uh, three, 286.7 billion naira. It, that is uh, monetary recovery. Yes. Uh, there are other currencies, in other currencies, we made very, very substantial uh, uh, recoveries. recoveries. Now, when these recoveries are made, they are not recovered into the pocket of uh, EFCC officers. There is the consolidated revenue account of the federal government that is kept with the CBN where every recovery goes. When you recover, you remit. Directly. <laughs> you don't recover to relute. You recover to remit. You remit it into the government covers. Now, I'm asking yeah, this question. So, yes. Yeah, because I, th I think the public needs to know that. We need to demystify the EFCC and some wrong notions that perhaps the general public have with regards to your agency. Yeah, there is, there is no need for such wrong motion. It's ignorance. It's ignorance or, or, or well, deliberate, uh, uh, deliberate uh, mischief. Because when recoveries are made, it is, we all know, we say it every now and then, every forum, we always say it, that when we make recoveries, the recoveries are sent into the government covers. It is either the, the EFCC recovery account that will eventually be remitted into the consolidated revenue account yes. or the single treasury account of the federal government. You understand? So that's what we do. And we give accounts. We give account of every recovery and how such recoveries.
recoveries are remitted into the government account, into the government uh, cover. So we don't recover money to reloot the same money. The same monies that no, you have no, recovered. No, 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 the, the, no. the already looted money in the uh, first place. Uh, uh, no, no, no. So we recover to remit uh, the same money into the gov uh, government uh, account for developmental purpose. Well, in, in recovery, yes, um, recoveries are being made, but sometimes uh, it appears as if there are some sacred cows within the Nigerian society Who are those where, where, cows? where even if recoveries are made, prosecutions are not followed through. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Well, you are here. We are live it's, on television. It's not I, I think you can de de debunk it's this. Uh, there are this no. Claim, see, then. listen to me. There are no secret cow in anti-corruption fight. I just told you that any offender, any financial offender that has committed a crime, we do the time. Yes. You understand? Because if uh, uh, if we are uh, investigating a matter, sometimes it might take us three years. Sometimes it might take us four years. And the very fact that we are not talking about such issues uh, does not necessarily mean that we are not working. We only talk when we are ready to go to court. Uh, so why investigations continue on any matter, it is wrong for anyone to say that, oh, the EFCC is compromised, the EFCC is not working, there are secret cow, this and that. No. There are, there are procedures for investigating cases. It, it takes a lot. There are a lot of things that are involved. You understand? Yes. So, and uh, when you look at the scorecard of the EFCC, then you, you, you'll be objectively, you'll be able to say that, oh, this agency is working. Because uh, just imagine Nigeria without the EFCC. Just imagine a nation like Nigeria without a very effective agency like the EFCC. Now, Do you know that yes. uh, businesses now Many people are, are suffering uh, irreparable damages in their businesses because of activities of rosters. Many people will want forex. They will say, okay, I have Naira. Uh, give me the forex equi equivalent. equivalent. They will not return the Naira. They will not return the forex. They will bring themselves to EFCC. And we ask them, but why will somebody give you money and you will not return this money? Well, it's, it's, are, are you okay? Don't you know that the, this business will suffer? There are such so many of such instances. So they report themselves. Yes. Now, if you, uh, for example, now if you give somebody money to give you the dollar equivalent, maybe you want to do some international, international yes. business, and the fellow neither return the naira and absconds with it. Uh, uh, so, won't you come and report? We have so many of such reports. And the commission, by the grace of God, have been able to make a lot of. But what, what, what would you have rather have them do in in situations like this? I mean, it's it's a business transaction gone wrong. It's a business transaction gone wrong. Assuming we don't have an anti-corruption agency like the EFCC that will intervene and say that bring back his money now. Ah, somebody gave you money, you neither return the naira nor the dollar equivalent. So what's your problem? And we will trace the flow of the money. The, we will trace the, the money. We will, we will make recovery and return the money to the right owner. Is that not a very, very wonderful engagement? Well, well it, it, it's wonderful. In terms of your operations and the operations of the ICPC, um, there have been instances where the EFCC has had a, had some sort of, you know, clashes. No, no, with, no, 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 not not just with ICPC. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about ICPC. I'm talking about with uh, institutions like the DSS. Mm -hmm. In 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 the case of the former CBN governor, where. There was a, a scuffle as to who had the right to keep him in custody. Uh, Can you clearly spell out in clear terms what the roles of EFCC are, what the roles of ICPC, which I believe a lot of people listening or watching right now would want to know, and finally, where should DSS draw the line when dealing with EFCC? Let me, you see, it is just misinterpretation of uh, operation. Yes. There has never been any clash between the EFCC and DSS, or between the EFCC and ICPC. But it wasn't the news. No, I, I just call it misinterpretation of operations. Okay. You understand? Because there is a very, very active working relationship, you know, among the three of us. And even all other anti-corruption agencies. Yes. We, the, the synergy is working. Because we all have our mandate, we have our Establishment Act. And so there is no need for clash. There is no, it just miss You know, people misconceiving things, misinterpreting uh, operation operations and uh, using whatever uh, adjective epithet they choose to, to, to call it. Yes. No scuffle, no clash. 
Now, the EFCC is the coordinating agency by the EFCC Act. is the coordinating agency for the enforcement of all economic and financial crime. The enforcement of laws, extant laws, you know, existing laws about economic and financial is the coordinating agency. Yes. So, uh, the immigration service, if they have issue of money laundering, they refer it to the EFCC. The NAPTIV, if they have issue of uh, money laundering, they you. refer it to the EFCC. The army, if they have issue of illegal oil bunkering, they refer it to the EFCC. The DSS, if they have issues of uh, money laundering, they refer it to the EFCC because the EFCC is the coordinating agency for the enforcement of every law that borders on economic and financial crime. So uh, that leaves no room for any clash. Because by the establishment act of the EFCC, the role of the commission, you know, is expressly spread out. You understand? Yes. And this understanding, this knowledge is, 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 uh, is known in, uh, among all the law enforcement agencies. So there is no, all these things that they say, the EFCC and uh, DSS, uh, they are clashing. No, we don't clash. We cannot clash because we are sister agencies. You understand? We, we, we work together. The DSS is, is, is effective. The EFCC is effective in our individual uh, 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 area of operations. Yes. You understand? So we are all working in the overall interest of the nation. So we are, why are we going to class? Why are we going? No. But you know, the, uh, some detractors, they will want to lead many to, uh, to an ordinary issue. No. There is a robust working relationship. So it's just a misinterpretation no, uh -huh. of roles so, uh -huh. that led to you that understand? scuffle. No, no scuffle. Well, we, 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 no we, we scuffle. saw it in the news. No. There were videos. I insist. We, we covered, we covered See, the, the, the... I insist that there is no scuffle. So what happened there in the court premises? Court premises? Yes, between ESCC and DSS over the detention of former CBN governor uh, 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 when he was... Yeah, well, he's still undergoing trial, but when the trial was still very hot. there is nothing like there is nothing like that, my brother. So it yeah. never happened. There is nothing like how can how can there be any scuffle? There can't be now. The the EFCC, if there is need for us to work with the DSS on, on an issue, we do it. If the DSS has need to work for us to work with us on an issue, they do it. You understand? Yes. So there is no need for scuffle. There is honestly, there, I'm, I'm telling you, there is no there is nothing like that. So, but you know, people just reading. Uh, whatever meaning they want to read to uh, our operations. But yes. we know that we work together actively, functionally. The synergy is working. And uh, there, is, there is no basis for, for any form of risk. Uh, all right. Uh, let's uh, move on from that. Let's talk about ground operations where your operatives tend to sort of, you know, raid uh, areas where there is any sort of intelligence that there's a crime, financial crime, or a cyber crime going on. There have been complaints that the modus operandi of the EFCC ground troops in performing some of these raids is somewhat too not uh, acceptable by the general public. It, it, it's like the way armed robbers will just storm a place and operate. And now, now I'm not, it, these are not my words. These are comments I've read online. Are there, are there reforms to ensure that your operatives on the ground approach and raid and apprehend people in a better way than they are already doing. Uh, well, I'm not going to agree with you that uh, we conduct our operations in the way I'm robbers or bandits or knocking down doors no, and the no, rest. No, 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 no. We are not armed <laughs> robbers now. No, certainly uh, not. We are not. Um, you know, I think I should make uh, this clarification. Okay. Uh, you know, a stinge operation. Yes. Is an operation that you carried out without invitation. You understand? And you don't need a search warrant. No, nothing. No, 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 no. You can go with a search warrant. Okay. As a, as a, as a law-abiding uh, anti-corruption agency. agency. It's for example, now, if there is intelligence about a kind of uh, uh, some funds that are stashed somewhere, and you know that truly by the binoculars, by the intelligence that you have, is there. Uh, so, will you invite the person and say, that money that you are keeping in your wardrobe, bring, bring it there. out. No. <laughs> you break into that place and you collect the money. You understand? So, stinge operations are operations that are done without invitation. Now, internet fraudsters, they normally ply their trade 
secretly. Mostly at night. Mostly at night. They know their locations. They know their code. They know their modus operandi. They know their trade secret. They know. And by the uh, functionality of our intelligence, we always track them. So when there is need to make an arrest, yes. you don't invite them and say, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Uh, Corede, Mr. This, please come. We have no. You conduct a stench operation. And when our executive chairman came in, he's, he's a lawyer. Yes. He's, he's a highly respected lawyer. He said, no, I'm not going to be a line rate. That you don't read, you don't read premises. You are not robust now. You are not a uh, yes, you can conduct stint operation. You know, so he said that no, I'm not going to allow read. It's read that he said he will not allow. He didn't say that he will not conduct stint operation. Every law enforcement agency across the world, you conduct stint operation now. You understand? Yes. And we, we don't do it in the covers of the night. So so now you agree that there have you been understand? instances where EFC there are instances has performed raids. No, perhaps maybe no, 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 don't use raid. I okay. just told you no stage operations. Stage operation very good. Uh, so if there is need for us to conduct a stage operation, yes, we do it responsibly. You don't expect people that have some criminal act that they are performing in the covers of their room to to say to sing a uh, uh, praises of EFCC when we break into there and we arrest them. That's where you get all of this, uh, all of this uh, online uh, propaganda. Uh, all this propaganda thing is uh, uh, many of them are blown out of proportion. And uh, ninety percent of our sting operations, or even more than ninety percent of our sting operations, always end in very successful prosecution with conviction, because we place far before the courts. Yes. You understand? So, stingy operations are always like that. They are always like, we don't do the breaking and busting. And No, 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 we don't do that. Uh, you see, there are, there, are, there are rules of engagement. When our operators, when they go for stingy operations, they are monitored. So, all of these things that people normally say that, hey, say, many people will wear EFCC. You, you have seen uh, so many impersonators that will wear EFCC uh, <laughs> uniform or whatever. Or, or, or your, your best. You, see, or you see them on the, on the, the social media. Yes. They will even be using uh, the, the admin kits, mm. using fake EFCC you know, identity and our insignia of uh, work, which is very wrong. Trying, trying to depict trying to stories portray that us, have trying been. Trying to uh, portray us in bad light. You know, calling a dog a bad name so that you, you, you hang it. We are not like that. We are very responsible. And there is even a whole department that is called Department of Ethics and Integrity in EFCC. If there is any uh, operation or any activity of any officer, you know, that, is, that, that runs counter to rightful conduct and procedure, you report him to that department. You you you, have, you just mentioned the reform or one of the reforms that your chairman uh, yes, Mr. Olu, yes. uh, Olu Kayade, has uh, you know brought about since his inception as EFCC chairman yeah. in the system, which is no more raids, yes, but now, sting operations, there is the intelligent. Review. There is the review of our arrest, okay, and bail procedure. Well, well, can can you break down some of these reforms? I believe for people who are yeah, listening or watching good. right now, very good. Yes, for example, concerning arrest. Uh, you don't make arrest whimsically. You make arrest when you have exhausted every modality of invitation. You have conducted your investigation. You have your facts on ground, and you are ready to go to court. The moment you arrest a suspect in 24 hours, you charge the suspect to court. Y yes. So we review our arrest procedure in line with the uh, the administration of the criminal justice act that everything that you do you do it lawfully yes and we are doing that he refused the bail procedure as far as he is concerned there is no need to keep a suspect in custody for 10 days 50 days but why do you need to do that the basis of arrest is to the basis of uh, bringing any suspect into custody is to ensure that when there is need to go to court you make yourself available so, so the moment an arrest is made, they will serve you the bail condition immediately. And you call your lawyer. And you perfect your bail condition. If you are able to perfect it in two hours, you go. There's no need to keep anybody behind bad and say, no, 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 no. Bail is to ensure that uh, a suspect makes himself or herself available for trial. When it's needed, you provide a shorty. The moment we, we, we confirm that the shorty is authentic, and, and, and these bills must be in monetary form? No, 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 no. Okay. No. Bail is free. 
Bail is free. As long as you provide a shorty. Yeah. Bail is free. So he refused all of, all of those things. And that's why we, in our, our holding facility now, you hardly see people where uh, trooping in and out. No, 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 no. Because the moment you have a matter, they serve you your bail condition. The moment you meet your con the condition, you bring a shorty or two shorties. They look at the, they confirm the address and the location of the shorties. And to establish the fact that truly they are responsible Nigerians that will always be there whenever we need the suspect. Yes. They release the suspect. That is the global best, 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 practice. best practice. There's no need keeping somebody to be rotting away in detention. No, 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 no. It serves nobody any purpose. Well, well um, f we have just about uh, 10 minutes to wrap up this conversation. And I think uh, I would want you to touch on one particular thing. Uh, EFCC's operations within the ambits of the law. I know earlier when I mentioned it, you sort of touched on it a little bit and skipped it over. Let's revisit the court's the, 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 the law court suit now by 19 states uh, that is currently um, ongoing with the EFCC. Yeah. Is the EFCC operating fully in every introspect within the ambits of the law? And if yes, is that enough reason for you to be of you know the boldness that you have just said that whatever it is whether a vendetta or some sort of hatred from the state governors you are certain that efcc will go to that court and they will challenge the legality and come out victorious uh, well uh, you know i i said it very clearly that yes. when a matter is before the court we all know it uh, you don't talk about it that much the courtroom is the courtroom. The newsroom is not the courtroom. This is the newsroom. Certainly. You understand? Yes. So matters for the courts are discussed in the law court, not in the courtroom. Not, not in, in the, the newsroom. News, not in the newsroom. Uh, the, only thing, the only thing that we can discuss in the newsroom is to look at um, is some issues uh, around it but not to talk about the facts of the matter. Now, those who went to court, I told you that they went to court challenging the constitutionality of the EFCC Act. Forgetting the fact that the Act is, 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 is from the National Assembly. The Act is, we didn't, it was not in my bedroom that the, the Act was uh, enacted. You know, it's the, the EFCC Act uh, was uh, a product of uh, sufficient and uh, intellectual and lawful deliberations at the National Assembly. And in so many sessions, and they, they, they came up with the idea was signed into a law. You understand? Yes. So, uh, so it's wrong for anybody to say that the FCC is an unlawful organization. Well, you know, well, you know, well, for, for more than yeah. 20 years, it's I been mean, in existence. I mean, you how, how is it suddenly uh, unlawful? So, so, but, you know, let there be a pronouncement from the highest court in the land yes you know on that matter is there the agf went to court yesterday with the with the 16 governors i think yes. three of them are faulted out now three of them have faulted uh, out yes maybe many more will see of that when they see that uh, there is no ground for whatever thing that uh, they are talking about what, what, so what? i think we should just leave it just like i said the newsroom is not the courtroom uh, let, the, uh, let the court decide since, since we can talk about matters of the court here yeah. now let, let's talk about another perspective to it okay while on one hand people are calling for a total scraping of the ESCC challenging its legality which we have set aside on the other hand some people are saying perhaps the name should be changed and the operations should be fine-tuned in such a way that the EFCC will be more effective than it currently is which you have pointed out all the wonderful and fantastic works that you've been doing how do you respond to these people Rose by any other name with this made nice interesting you understand yeah uh -huh. so it is not a matter of the name you give to an agency it is the matter of the vibrancy the solidity and the credibility of its operations so if they say that we should call the efcc another name what name are they going to call corruption what name are they going to call cybercrime? What name are they going to call procurement fraud? It's still the same thing. What name are they going to call stealing and outright embezzlement of funds? Uh, there is no point beating about the bush. 
Is the EFCC functioning? Yes. Are there proofs about the functionality of the commission? Yes. Are criminals at peace with the EFCC? No. Those are the issues. The people that are fighting this commission, they are people that I won't ask or the other to grind with the commission. If they are not fighting us, we'll be surprised now. If they are, will you not be surprised that we have an agency that is fighting corruption and, and the criminals are at peace with not fighting them. So the very fact that they are fighting us, they are raising issues, it is because we are effective. It is because we are delivering. It is because the fire, the, we are stoking fire. The furnace is burning against any form of corrupt practice. From another angle of argument, um, analysts have sort of mentioned or pinpointed the change of SARS to SWAT and a reform within that particular unit of the Nigeria police that has sort of seen a change in their operations and a better approach to their operations, which was the cause of the uh, October uh, 20th, 20, uh, 2020 uh, hashtag NSAS uh, protest. They have pointed to that as an example of a name change and an operation change that has worked. Can that work for the EFCC? I just told you now. And now, if I should post a question back to you, yes, in all sincerity, yes, in all in all honesty, as a Nigerian, have you ever felt the minutest impact of the EFCC? In terms of in terms of efficiency, in terms of effectiveness? Well, in some cases I have, yes. Oh, in some cases. In some cases. Okay. That you as a Nigerian, yes. in some cases. Other Nigerians will also say, in some cases. In some cases. Other Nigerians will also say, in some cases. Yes. And when we now marry all of these cases together, you find out that in many cases, the commission is very effective. Let me tell you the truth. Anybody that has an issue with the EFC, they know. Don't let us deceive ourselves. Those who, if, uh, if you have not felt uh, uh, the teeth of the wind, you will not know how cold it feels. Yes. Those who have issues with the commission, they know that the commission is working. Don't let us pander to all of this uh, sentimental, all of this uh, blackmail that, uh, that is coming from left, right, and center. Will you have an anti-corruption agency like the EFCC and people will not be fighting left, right, and center? Corruption fights back. Corruption fights back. So, and uh, the present uh, leadership of the commission is very focused. It's very focused. It's, uh, we are, all of these things will not, uh, will, not uh, will not distract us from what we are doing. So, whether a name change, rebranding, re whatever thing that anybody may be pro uh, proposing, the truth of the matter is that corruption is real and it must be fought. And it must be fought with every, every, every effort, sincerity and focus. That, now, that, now that Mr. Mr. Dele, we have just uh, two minutes to wrap up this uh, conversation. I just want your message to Nigerians in clear terms as a spokesperson of the EFCC. Yeah, my message is yes. very clear. All right. Corruption affects all of us. The state of our road, the state of our infrastructures, the quality of our life, our life expectancy, everything that we see all around us. Corruption has made mess of all of these things. Should we continue like this? No. So if corruption is affecting all of us, we must also be up in arms against it. There is need for collaborative engagement. There is need for public ownership of the fight against corruption. There is need for us to be deliberate, to be intentional, to say, no, we are not going to allow it. Because environmentally, individually, corporately, we are all suffering the effect of corruption. So every onlooker, is either a traitor or a coward. So you cannot be an onlooker in the fight against corruption. If you are an onlooker, it is either you are also in the, in the business. So we must, all of us must come together and say, no, we will not allow corruption to continue. And as we do so, it will be in the overall interest of our nation. All right, I must thank you so much, Mr. Dele Oyewale. Uh, it's a pleasure having you on, on the program today, and thank it's you. been a very informative discussion as thank well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.